Ellen Rose, it is so nice to to meet you. You are the vice president of brand innovation at Arby's, right? Yeah. And how, how long have you been there? I've been with Arby's for a little over eight years. Wow. That's so is that pre or post the Ignite or the yeah, the Inspire brands? Oh, it's definitely pre that. So I got to be part of the Arby's team. Um, in, in the beginning, when we were doing some of the really fun, we have the meets just starting that campaign, um, really hitting our stride with innovation. And then, you know, the next level of success was becoming part of Inspire. So it's been fun to see it from the beginning. Yeah. And you guys were the, the sort of the, the founding member of Inspire Brands. So. We like to think so. <laughs> I remember writing that up way back whenever that was. So you guys have, have been doing so well uh, since uh, we have the meets and, and on. So let's talk about what you guys have been doing over the past, say, year or so. You have some, well, I'll let you do it. I was going to list some of the things, but you know, you're the expert. Okay. Yeah, no, we, we have been doing really well. And, you know, when COVID began, I think we were all very anxious about losing our um, same store sales streak. So we've been going, it was going to be our 10th, 10th year. Um, luckily, you know, we, we persevered and ended up having a really strong year and we're on our way this year to 11 years of same store sales growth, which is just, um, which is just phenomenal, you know, especially in the QSR industry, which can tend to be a little cyclical. Um, we've been able to really continue our momentum. Um, and we've done that in a variety of ways, but one of the biggest things has been our product innovation and then some of our cultural activations, um, which we've had a, a few great successes this year so far. Uh, I guess if I could just think of, what, uh, there's a handful that come to mind. So first was our RBs for RBs, which was- uh, the, letter we took R, the letter B, right? Exactly. So RBs for RBs, meaning running backs. And so it, this was an idea that we had We've had for a long time, but we couldn't quite figure out how we were going to bring it to life. And when the uh, NIL came into play, so the name, Im image, and likeness, we're like, okay, this is going to be our opportunity to do this. And we wanted to do it in a fun way. And we wanted to do it with college because we thought it could be a really cool way to impact um, all of those running backs out there. So we did a promotion where if they said they were going to Arby's, um, we would sponsor them and they would get $500. And we've had over 80 so far do that. Um, which has been just, uh, we, which has been just really fun to see that, and it's been great. I have a lot of friends who, you know, watch a lot of college football, and I've been getting a lot of texts with like, "Wait, did Arby's just sponsor the running back on my team?" And the answer is, "Yeah, we did." So that was something that was super fun that we kicked off this fall, um, and then we went right into our new uh, real country style rib, and so this was. Um, really playing off the success of our smokehouse platform. So we have a great partnership with Sadler's. They're a smokehouse in East Texas, and we've had our brisket on our menu since about 2013. And that was one of the first, I guess, innovative products that we did that really fuel our success with the We Have the Meats campaign. So we um, developed with them another product that is essentially a pork rib product that is meant to be an elevated version of another version of a rib thing that's out in QSR. And uh, we did that just recently in October and it was it was a really huge success. We did some fun stuff with these things called smoke sweats, um, which was actually the sweatsuit that we had smoked at Sadler's in the smoker. So it smelled like our product. Um, and those things sold out I, within, like as soon as we launched them, they were sold out. So that was a really fun activation that we just did. So those are the meat sweats that you then smoked? Yeah, so we had the meat sweats first, um, mm -hmm. which were the sweats that looked like had a bunch of different meat all over it. And then the, we I, came I up have with- a suit of the meat sweats. I, I wear it periodically. Oh, good. Okay. Well, see, they're so hard to get your hands on. I don't even have any of those. Um, so you met your special. <laughs> so, on Instagram, you will see me with the, in the I meat I love sweats. that. Yeah, so then we did basically these smoke sweats. So they were they weren't meat themed, so to speak, but they were like a solid color, very on trend with what you're seeing right now. I think everybody's wearing sort of these solid color sweatsuits. And then we smoked them so they smelled like smoked meat, which is pretty cool. And they sold out immediately. Yeah. yeah. I don't even I don't even know if they lasted an hour, honestly. Yeah, people are, are into that. Hey, they're into they're into sweats, they're into smoke, they're into Arby's. So that right. 
smart too. Like, I mean, how many sweats did you have? Like, was it an actual big money maker and more of a promotional thing? Or no, I mean, we didn't. And I actually don't. I don't know the the full number that we produced, but. Um, in general, these things are are not money makers for us because when you we aren't we aren't able to produce that many, so it's not like we have this big scale. They're really just done to number one um, connect to some product that we're doing. We usually we try to make sure that when we're doing these kinds of activations, they're not just random things that don't connect with RVs. We always use this lens of could anybody else do this? And if they can, if you can, you know, replace Arby's with another QSR brand, then we we typically don't do it because it just doesn't feel very ownable for us and authentic. And I think that's really important to us that we kind of maintain this authenticity with um, with our guests and with our customers. So that's the first thing. And then, you know, um, we typically do a very limited amount. And so then uh, we have super fans that really want to get their hands on this kind of stuff. And so that's really who these promotions are directed at. We want scarcities. Scarcity is kind of part of the fun, right? Totally. And uh, people like to have collector's items. And I, I'm pretty sure that that Instagram post is my most liked Instagram post. Me and I, I meet. Uh, it was at the height of the pandemic. And I didn't want people to mess with me when I was going to the farmer's market. I wanted them to keep their distance. And I figured, just put on a full suit of meat sweats. And, you know. Let them know you're there. They'll know who you are if you do that. Well, that too. Uh, so you did the Arby's, you got the smoke sweats, which are cool. And then you guys also just launched vodka. We, yes. So that is actually launching technically tomorrow. People can go on and buy it. Um, this one has probably, I guess, elicited the most, uh, texts and emails and phone calls from all everybody here at the office's friends and family, because people are like, wait. I got to get my hands on that. What what exactly is happening? Um, and this one has been a while in the making. So we launched crinkle fries to our core menu um, earlier this year. And really that in and of itself was newsworthy because Arby's is sort of synonymous with the curly fry. While people are great fans of the curly fry, like full disclosure, I'm actually like not that into the curly fries. So I was one of the people that was was thinking about like, could we have a different fry and could we do that? And we knew that we couldn't get rid of curly fries. We would never do that. It's it's part of our brand heritage. We have people who just absolutely love them. So we looked at another complimentary fry that we could bring in. And, and the crinkle fry, really, we, we did tons of testing. And that one went out. So we launched that earlier this year to the core menu. And this was, we were, this was meant to happen back then when we launched this. The thing is, turns out, launching an alcohol brand is a lot harder than you think. And there's a lot more regulations on going on with it. So, um, you know, we really, it took us kind of this long to bring it to life and we're really excited about it and it's launching tomorrow. And I can assure you, it will probably sell out faster than the, faster than the smoke sweats. Um, so it's one flavors, curly fry, one favorite flavors, crinkle, crinkle fry. It's hard to say sometimes. Um, and we worked with uh, a distillery to get it done. And we've got some, um, you know, awesome recipes uh, with Bloody Marys and those kinds of things that we're going to be, you know, putting out there. I've actually, I think, only had the uh, curly fries once because I'm such a big fan of the potato cakes that I get potato cakes when I mm. go there. Well, so, you know, it's funny. Before we launched them, I was, I never, I didn't get a lot of fries at Arby, so I would always get something else as my side, or I wouldn't get a side, um, which is like the insight, right? There were cert just certain people out there who weren't going to get a side, weren't going to get fries, and now that we have crinkle fry, I, I love and hate them at the same time because I'm so addicted to them. Now it's like I have to get my crinkle fries. Well, if only you guys had liquor licenses, you could be selling vodka at your at your Arby's locations. True. I don't know if there'd be that much uptake since like even even in fast casual they they have difficulties uh selling alcohol so you said that you guys uh continued your same store sales streak during uh during the height of the pandemic mm -hmm. how how did you do that what kind of adaptations did you have to make oh gosh uh, so many um you know we had to pivot we had to pivot pretty quickly to get a um, system value program out because in the beginning, you know, we were certainly concerned that people were looking for a deal or looking for a value. And luckily we had been testing something um, as two for six everyday value, which is what we ended up launching right after COVID started. So we had it, we had it in test. We felt pretty confident about it and we were able to kind of fast move the launch of it. 
So that was something I think that was a big success of ours. So it's just taking Arby's favorite things like beef and cheddar, classic roast beef, and putting them in an everyday two for six construct. So typically there's three to four items that are in that bundle and we rotate them. So um, we rotate them every couple of months. So we're bringing news to it. And that's been something that we've, we've been, that drum beat's been going on for a while now. And um, we've continued to see that do really well for us. Um, and again, it's a way to, it's a way to make sure that we're, you know, talking about some of the fan favorites that Arby's has, but also, um, bringing news to it. Like when we launch nuggets, we put nuggets in the bundle to bring more awareness of that. And it's just a great way for, to showcase the variety that we have on our menu too, because we have so many different meat blocks and categories. Yeah. And again, I've been a fan for so long that I pretty much eat the Arby's regular roast beef sandwich and potato cake. And so I tried the brisket. I had your gyro and you had that. You still have the gyro? Yep, that's on our everyday menu. So we have that all the time. That's cool. Uh, so did you have to make a lot of uh, operational adjustments? I mean, you already do a lot of drive-through, right? So. Yeah, that was another that was another change for I mean a big change for us because while the majority of our business does go through the drive-through, we still had a pretty strong you know in restaurant business at the time. And so we had to, our ops team, they're just amazing. And our franchisees out there are amazing as well, um, trying to figure out ways that we could be scrappy to do different things. I mean, everything from, I remember we were trying to figure out how we were going to be able to very quickly get um, like plexiglass that could go in between the in between the car and the order taker and one of our restaurant crews was like we can just pull this out of the menu board inside that no one's coming in and we can use it i mean i know that just sounds that that was and i know we weren't alone in doing some of this stuff a lot of the industry was doing these things but it was like any idea that people had we were quickly um quickly looking at them assessing them and seeing how we could get them out the other thing i think that was unique for us because a lot of Inspire brands did really well during during COVID, uh, we have the benefit of learning from those others. So when I've worked for other brands in the past, and you know I've, I'm the only one in my role, right? So it's hard to really have a peer to go to and 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 be able to bounce ideas off of. And I think we benefited from being able to say like, okay, Sonic's doing this, Arby's is doing this, we have Jimmy John's trying this, and so collectively we could move things faster because we could each try different things, come together very quickly and say, let's take the best of what we know. So I think that was another big part of our success as well. Um, and then, you know, having third party delivery um, was something that we, we actually ha had just started ramping that up right before COVID. So that was very lucky that we had that ready to go. Um, and that was a big win for us too. And I think people thought Arby's is a break from like their normal routine fast food. So I'm going to like Arby's is I'm going to go do that because actually it's just a little something better. It's a little higher quality and I want to treat myself to that. And I think that helped us as well. I, I think that is one of the reasons that I have a soft spot in my heart for Arby's too, is when I was a kid, like that was the special occasion fast food because it was just a little bit premium, a little bit more expensive. You could right. get it, smoke a shake if you wanted to, you know, it was, it was special. Uh, so what do you guys have planned for 2022? It's coming up. It's on us. It is upon us. It is it is already here, basically, <laughs> as we're as we're talking about our plans for next year. So we have some um, I can't give everything away. Right. But you're definitely going to see some things for us that are, as we like to say, first, best or only. So when we're thinking about our innovation, we we like to say, Again, like, are we the first to do something? So are we the first QSR to have a real lamb euro? Yes, that, that's something that we were, you know, the first to do. Are we, are we the, maybe the only one that can do it? Or if it's something that's out there in the marketplace, can we be the best? Um, and so I think you're going to see more of the, the best coming from us. So really taking things that are synonymous with, with QSR, synonymous with fast food, and elevating it a little bit in a uniquely Arby's way. Um, so I can't really give you much more than that, but I think you can expect to see some, um, some, there are a couple of big surprises coming up in the first part of the year. That's, that's very exciting for me. Yeah. I, I look forward to, to checking. It's, it's hard living in New York city. There are like two Arby's in the whole I know. city or three. There's a third one. Um, but I'll be looking forward to checking them out and and ellen rose i thank you so much for taking the time to talk about what's up at arby's 
Yeah, no, it was great talking with you too. And I can't wait to come back and once we get some of those fun things launched next year and talk again.